Here's torpedo number two. Roy Spencer and John Christie are very well-known scientists because they have been deeply involved in processing and presenting to the scientific community the results of the satellite data for the last 20 years or so. They recently published a paper in the Geophysical Research Letters uh, where they observed these climatic phenomena in, which occur in the tropics. And what we're looking at here, time scale, 30 days before the peak of the event and 30 days after. So these are several week-long events where you get warming phases and cooling phases, and that causes heating, evaporation, and rain. So these are major rainfall events that occur in the tropics. And they averaged nine of these and aligned them about the zero day. And what they found is, as the heating progresses, the low clouds in green increase because there's more evaporation, more water vapor, more clouds. And so initially do the high cirrus clouds made of ice. But shortly after the start of the event, the ice clouds decrease sharply in cirrus. Now, that cirrus cloud is trapping the infrared radiation that's going out of space. If you reduce the cirrus clouds, you let more radiation out and the Earth cools. So, this is a direct empirical, based on data, uh, demonstration of the validity of what uh, Dick Lindzen again uh, coined a name called the iris effect a few years ago. It's been strongly criticised by other climatologists uh, and one of the reasons is that good empirical proofs of it have not been forthcoming. Well here is one. This is an enormous torpedo because if this same mechanism, if, occurs on a annual decadal scale it will account for 75% of the warming that is predicted to occur by the alarmist computer models. Now, whether you believe those models or not is not the point. Even if their predictions are right, they don't take into account this mechanism. Okay, here's the third torpedo. Uh, Chris has shown this graph. It's the carbon dioxide curve. So as we increase carbon dioxide up to today's 280, uh, the temperature rises about 6 degrees of warming. Note that you get half of that, 3 degrees, for the first 20 ppm. It's a very effective greenhouse gas carbon dioxide when there's nothing there to begin with. But once you start stacking it up on top of that, then the curve levels off logarithmically, and for doubling from the pre-industrial level to doubling is about a degree or so of warming. And that's not controversial. So how is it then that when we go to the IPCC's predictions, which we have here, is their first assessment, second, third and fourth assessment reports, that they are predicting um, is the uh, temperature, uh, anything between one and a half and about uh, four and a half degrees, and their latest estimate is this, a warming of three degrees uh, with error bars between two and four and a half. Now they get to that from one degree by considering the positive feedbacks, which is the water vapour, as Chris has already explained, if you get a little bit warmer because of the carbon dioxide warming, then you evaporate more water. That's an even more powerful greenhouse gas, so you get warmer still. That's true, in theory. But in the real world, other processes come into play, and they're mostly negative, particularly clouds. More water vapour, more clouds. They bounce the light back to space, the low clouds, so you get cooling. And the, the climate system is highly homeostatic. It is self-regulating in this sense. Take it away from its more or less stable up and down jigging every day. It's not stable, in fact, but you know what I mean. Take it away from that, it will always tend to return. Okay, so against that background, you get the alarmist figures by invoking positive feedbacks and ignoring negative feedbacks. Um, uh, Stephen Schwartz, a very well-established climatologist, published a new paper where he's analysed, using empirical data again, um, the uh, amount of warming that we should get for a doubling of carbon dioxide. And here's his conclusion. He looks at the relationship between surface air temperature and ocean heat content, and he concludes that for a CO2 doubling, you'll get a degree of warming, which is right on the line of what that theoretical curve showed in the first place. In other words, the positive and the negative feedbacks balance each other out, more or less. Here I've plotted that, and you'll see that even the error bar that only just overlaps with the error bar of the alarmist IPCC um, uh, estimate. So, torpedo number three is another devastating torpedo. There's no answer to this at the moment. This is good, sound, empirical science. It's not arm waving, it's not a computer model, it's empirical science. Okay. Back in, 99, uh, sorry, back in 2006, I wrote an article in the newspaper, and scientists don't write headlines like that, but occasionally you get a sub-editor who is brilliant, and in retrospect I have to say that was a brilliant choice of headline. 
it generated something like 50 or 60,000 hits on the web around the world within two or three days. Most of those hits uh, were people rising up to, say, Bob Carden, I don't know what he's talking about, he's ignored the El Nino, he's cherry-picking, he's doing this, that, or the other, and it's stuff you can argue, but it was mostly petty. However, in amongst there, there was some really good, you know, world-class criticism. Who cares what an unknown academic from a second-rate university in a third-rate country thinks? <laughs> Well, some first-rate academics and a first-rate research institution in a first-rate country, namely the Hadley Centre, which is the British Meteorological Office's research centre in the United Kingdom, have just come out in one of the world's leading, used to be leading science journals called Science. Its reputation is a bit in tatters now, as is nature's, over these sorts of papers. But anyway, here it is, published a couple of weeks ago, and these are the people that do the computer model. Our earlier models did not attempt to predict internally generated natural variables. What? <laughs> well, you all knew that. Yes, I didn't know that. I'm a scientist, but most of you didn't know that. All these computer models they generate, they don't actually take account of natural variation. They just plug in some basic mathematical equations which are well established and which govern some of the phenomena we understand, and they generate these predictions in the Well, now... These people were amongst those that rose up and crucified me because I pointed out there'd been no warming since 1998. How long does this piece of string have to be? It was first five, six, seven, it's now eight years with no warming. And they deny it. They say, well, you can't look at anything over that short a period of time. That's weather and climate. <laughs> They've finally been forced to address it. So what do they do? Our system predicts internal variability will offset the anthropogenic global warming signal for the next few years. It's not warming now, is it? But you wait till 2015, is the next message. <laughs> so here's the graph. The, bl the black is the actual uh, elapsing of temperature. The yellow and the blue are two of their different model runs, and the uh, red is the error bars around them. And you will see that to some degree, if you've got a good imagination, uh, this black plateau in here where there's no warming, this is the big El Nino in 1998, that they've managed to reduce the rate of increase of these two curves across there, but of course wait until 2000. Well, I mean, really. It happens that there's just been another paper published, a very important paper by Cam and Tung, where they've shown that the relationship here, the two variables, are the total solar irradiance, the energy from the sun coming in at the top of the atmosphere, and the surface temperature of the Earth. And it turns out there's a bit of amplification and that we get this uh, pattern here where uh, on, these are 11-year um, uh, sunspot cycles that's tracking here, and here's the scale. So we're going from about minus 0.2 to plus 0.2. So we've got about a 0.4 degree being driven by solar variability, change in temperature. That's not in this model. There it is plotted on the model. I mean, how can you take these people seriously, let alone how can they get their papers published in Science and Nature? This is not science. It's PlayStation 4 stuff. 